This video is about cell structure and organelle function, and the topics in this key concepts video are a comparison between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, similarities among cells, comparisons between plant, animal, and fungal cells, and organelle function in protein synthesis. These key concepts are some of the most important topics covered in the IB biology course. Cells can be categorized in several ways. One is based on the presence or absence of a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. You can see here, prokaryotic cells are smaller and less complex compared to the eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotes do not have organelles surrounded by a membrane, so we can say that they are non-compartmentalized. Here you can see eukaryotic cells are larger and much more complex. There are organelles, such as the mitochondria, that are enclosed by a membrane, so they are compartmentalized and separate from the cytosol of the cell. Prokaryotes evolved first and were a common ancestor of eukaryotes. Although some prokaryotes form multicellular colonies, prokaryotes, such as bacteria, are single-celled organisms. Eukaryotes can be unicellular or multicellular, However, complex organisms that have specialized tissues and organs require the compartmentalization found in eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotes have DNA found as a chromosome in a single loop, free-floating in the cytoplasm in a region referred to as the nucleoid. While eukaryotic cells have DNA wound around histone proteins and contained in a double membrane-bound nucleus with pores separate from the cytoplasm, both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells have ribosomes. Prokaryotes have smaller, less dense 70S ribosomes that are free-floating in the cytoplasm, while eukaryotes have larger, denser 80S ribosomes embedded in the rough endoplasmic reticulum as well as free-floating in the cytoplasm. When looking at cellular structure, there are a few features that are common to all cells regardless of cell type. Cells can be most broadly categorized as prokaryote and eukaryote, and eukaryotes have further cell types such as fungi, plant, and animal. All cells have a semi-permeable membrane composed of lipids that allows them to establish homeostasis. Cells have a cytoplasm that is composed mainly of water where chemical reactions like hydrolysis and condensation can take place. All cells will have genetic material, which has instructions for building polypeptides and ribosomes to assemble them. These polypeptides then fold into complex, three-dimensional structures to form functional proteins. These proteins carry out numerous activities within the cell and also contribute to the formation of structures both inside and outside the cell. Now that we have looked at the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, Let's compare the characteristics of eukaryotic cells from the plant, animal, and fungi kingdoms. Let's begin with the cell wall. All three types of cells will have a plasma membrane. However, only plant and fungi also have a cell wall. This gives the organism a stiff, inflexible structure compared to animals lacking a cell wall. Plants have cell walls composed of cellulose, which is a carbohydrate composed of repeating glucose monomers. Fungi have cell walls composed of chitin, a polysaccharide made of repeating units of modified glucose molecules. All three cell types contain vacuoles. However, their size and function differ. Plants have a large central vacuole whose primary function is to store water, waste products, and provide structural support. If you've ever noticed a house plant that's droopy because it hasn't been watered, its vacuoles have lost some of their water content and turgor causing the plant to droop. Fungal vacuoles will vary depending on the species and stages of growth, and the vacuoles range in function from storage, digestion, and osmotic balance. Animal cell vacuoles are small and scattered throughout the cytoplasm, usually involved in storage and transport. Plastids exist only in plant cells and can be categorized into chloroplasts, chromoplasts, and leucoplasts. Chloroplasts contain the green pigment chlorophyll that captures light energy during photosynthesis, allowing plants to be autotrophic or produce their own food. Both animals and fungi lack chloroplasts, which means they must consume other organisms for energy, making them heterotrophic. Chromoplasts store pigment responsible for giving fruits and flowers vibrant colors. Leucoplasts store starch, typically in seeds or roots, like carrots and potatoes. 
Centrioles are found in animal cells and are responsible for organizing chromosomes during cell division. However, they do not appear in plant or fungal cells. Flagella can be found in the gametes of animals and some species of fungi, but usually not in plants. Animal cells have cilia and flagella associated with basal bodies, while fungi do not. So now we've seen some key differences between the eukaryotic cell structure of plants, animals, and fungi. Let's look deeper into their similarities. All living things use protein as important structural and functional units. Eukaryotes, including plants, animal, and fungi, have more specialized organelles that allow them to transport proteins out of the cell, which is a key component of multicellular organisms with specialized cells. If you're unfamiliar with the function of these organelles, you can pause the video to refresh your understanding of their functions before we discuss how they are involved in protein synthesis. Proteins are the most abundant functional and structural units of the body. There are a huge variety of functions proteins perform and are found as enzymes controlling metabolic pathways, receptors facilitating cell signaling, or providing structural support in tissues such as skin and bone. Cells play a crucial role in protein synthesis, and it's helpful if we can organize our understanding of organelle functions as part of the machinery needed to build and transport proteins. Cells produce a diverse array of proteins tailored to their specific functions. The sequence of DNA bases within the nucleus contains the information needed to construct polypeptides that form proteins. These DNA segments, known as genes, encode the instructions for protein synthesis. When the gene is being transcribed and actively used to produce a polypeptide, we refer to it as being expressed. For a more detailed explanation, you can explore the transcription and translation video. We are going to trace the path of a protein as it's produced in the cell to explore organelle function. Let's imagine it's a digestive enzyme that could potentially harm the cell. We'll see how the cell manages to produce this enzyme without causing self-digestion. The production of the protein begins in the nucleus, where a specific segment of DNA, known as a gene, is transcribed into messenger RNA. This separation allows for further modifications of the messenger RNA before it encounters a ribosome. These modifications enable the production of various proteins and other essential changes that require compartmentalization. Once the messenger RNA is modified, it passes through a nuclear pore and messenger RNA attaches to a ribosome embedded in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. As the messenger RNA is translated, the growing polypeptide is directed into the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is enclosed by a membrane, effectively isolating the polypeptide from the cytosol. While the polypeptide traverses the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it folds into a specific 3D structure, which is crucial for determining its function as a protein or subunit of a protein. At this stage, the protein could potentially be active and harmful, but it remains contained within the rough endoplasmic reticulum and cannot harm the cell. Proteins are then packaged into vesicles that bud from the rough endoplasmic reticulum's membrane. These vesicles transport the proteins to the Golgi apparatus, where they are sorted and further packaged into new vesicles. Proteins intended for secretion outside the cell are packaged together, while those destined for lysosomes, for example, are packaged separately. In the case of our digestive enzyme, it will be packaged with other proteins to be secreted. The Golgi apparatus forms a vesicle that travels to the plasma membrane merging with it and releasing the enzyme to the extracellular space through exocytosis. Throughout this process, the enzyme never encounters the cytosol of the cell. The movement of the vesicles within the cell requires energy in the form of ATP and relies on the cytoskeleton for guidance. ATP is generated in the mitochondria, which also possesses a membrane that allows for efficient conversion of pyruvate into ATP, providing the cell with chemical energy. It's worth noting that not all cells are involved in protein production. For example, in plants, phloem sieve element cells lack a nucleus and have reduced organelles to allow the passage of sap. Their metabolic functions are carried out by companion cells. In this video, we reviewed the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes 
and saw that eukaryotic cells are larger, more complex, and compartmentalized compared to prokaryotic cells. We also reviewed cell similarities and saw that all cells have membranes, contain cytoplasm, and have genetic material and ribosomes. We looked at the differences between plant, animal, and fungal cells in terms of their presence and composition of cell walls, the size and position of vacuoles, the function of plastids and plant cells, and centrioles and animal cells. And we saw that plant cells do not have cilia or flagella, whereas fungi and animals have them present in some cells. We reviewed organelle function in eukaryotes and found that many organelles are involved in protein production and that the compartmentalized nature of these organelles allow for proteins to be produced in isolation from the metabolism from the rest of the cell.